From VH1's Cartel Crew, I'd like to welcome Michael Blanco and Marie Ramirez de Ariano to Sidewalks Entertainment. Hi, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you so much for having us. So what, uh, how'd I do with the pronunciation of your names? I did say I was gonna do it with an accent. Did Better I do okay? All my teachers did in high school. <laughs> nice, awesome. <laughs> so, being a part of the cartel, you might have had a childhood that might have been a little bit different compared to most. Uh, what was your life like as a child? Marie, what was your childhood like? Were you able to hang out with kids outside of the family? Did you have bodyguards? Did you go to private school? No, I lived a regular, you know, more or less a regular life, you know, with my parents. Um, we lived a normal life here in Miami. You know, my dad just had his businesses going on and he tried sheltering us a lot, but we kind of lived through it, you know, when it came to like the legalities and stuff like that, that was the only issue that I had. But um, it was kind of, you know, we had a normal life, but then, you know, life was just really hard and very unexpected when, um, you know, when the law caught up. And what about you, Michael? What was your childhood like? I had a, a very secluded childhood until my later years, my later adolescence, but uh, I had a normal childhood in the Bay Area. You know, I, lived, I grew up in Miami, but I also grew up in Morgan Hill, California, Santa Clara County and, and San Francisco. So I had that, I could say that was my normal fun childhood. I learned a lot about the land. I learned a lot about the fields. I learned a lot about the people and the California lifestyle. What's a common misconception that people have about the cartel that you hear most often? I would say is that um, a lot of a lot of people try to, I guess, alienate the fact that most cartel families are exactly that, a family. So the nucleus starts from a family, like a family business. So a lot of people have that misconception that people in cartels or people that were related to cartels are always on their narco. Like a celebrity would always be on his celebrity. And it's, it's wrong because at the end of the day, there's some normality to that crazy world. What about you, Marie? What do you hear most often? Um, I mean, I guess it's just like, just like how Michael said, it's just the stigma that everybody has on, you know, families that come from that kind of lifestyle. You know, we really are family. We do live a normal life. We go to school, we go to, you know, we do everything normal. And, uh, you know, it's our family. Like, it, it was, it's something that we were just raised into, but it's just a stigma, I guess, you know? Your show, Cartel Crew on VH1, documents our lives after the cartel. Uh, Michael, when you decided to film Cartel Crew, how did your family and friends from your life in the cartel feel about your decision? Some were all for it, some were not. A lot of people understood my transgression. It's just, I guess a lot of people are are stuck in the 80s. You know, a lot, a lot of people were still with the stigma or a lot of people that were still part of the life did not really understand what the transformation that was happening. Yeah, we come from yeah. a, you know, a very, traditional old school family and back then everybody was taught that this is not the kind of things you talk about you don't film that <laughs> you don't film it you don't take pictures you don't do none of that you know. so we were always taught that things are always to be kept you know quiet but you know it's it's us you know living our life now but i we did get a lot of love from from the community as well because you know i guess at the end of the day once you're on that big screen once you're on tv you went legal it's a it's a different world so it it took probably season two where people start understanding that to start understanding that fully what was the most noticeable change in your lives off camera after filming the first season i guess it was just a culture shock you know, and then besides the pandemic, what? no, she was yeah. saying, <laughs> oh, season one. No, I guess for me, it was more of a culture shock of how many people related to us, and you know, you know, just getting a lot of love from a lot of different people all around the world. 
and you know a lot of yeah the global of, love the global love you know there's a lot of people that are raised into this kind of lifestyle you know and I, not a lot of people make it out yeah so i guess we got a lot of celebration also after season one a lot of people started understanding and from places all around the world you know new zealand you know <laughs> like fans everywhere yeah. really understood so it was it, it was a kind of shocking to now become a tv i guess b class celebrity or what you would call it but in my life and growing up in medellin and miami we were always mafia cartel celebrities what's been your most memorable fan reaction that you've gotten from someone who watches your show <laughs> like a memorable fan reaction oh my god we've oh. had plenty of yeah. the girl california i love tried. california shout out to santa rosa um I, I was, we went to go do a hosting out in, um, in Santa Rosa and I literally had a girl in tears. Run down at 2 a.m. She ran at 2 o'clock in the morning just while to her, hug me. And while her mom hi. and aunt were with us at, at, at the hosting that we were doing at 2 a.m., a young lady, probably had to wake up to go to high school, ran down <laughs> like three miles because we were on the FaceTime with her parents, right? Ran down just to meet Marie as we're exiting to our car with our security and it was the Michael Jackson effect. She just started crying and breaking, and I was in a state of shock, and her I'm parents like, were there. Why? It was great. Don't cry. I felt so bad. I'm like, why yeah. are you crying? I don't want to make you cry, but I get a lot of uh, fan notoriety often. <laughs> oh, my gosh. That's so awesome, though. Wow. She ran to come meet you at 2 o'clock in the morning. Oh, my gosh. That is so awesome. But I love it. I love it. Can't say I don't love it. <laughs> One last question, and this question is for both of you. What motivates you to continue sharing your lives with the rest of the world on TV? My children. You know, I'm, at the end of the day, I'm a father. I got bills to pay. I'm out here making my moves and exposing myself to the world because this is how I feed my family. Beautiful, beautiful. Well, I had such a great time speaking with both of you. Unfortunately, we are out of time. But again, thank you so much for taking the time to speak with me today. Thank you so much. Thanks Have for a having day. us. Everyone, you can watch more of Michael Blanco and Marie Ramirez de Ariano in VH1's Cartel Crew. For more full-length celebrity interviews, visit SidewalksTV.com.